the mayor of London has been dragged into a race row after this official, after his official website posted this photo of a white family, uh, a man, a woman and two children, uh, that, with a line that said uh, it doesn't represent real Londoners. Um, the image Outrageous. shows two children walking along by the Thames and in response, the mayor's spokesperson said the photo caption was added by a staff member in error. It doesn't reflect the view of the Mayor of Greater London Authority. Well, the document's now been taken off the Greater London website and is being reviewed to ensure the language and guidance is appropriate. I have to say, my parents were a Londoners, they're not with us now. They couldn't have been more London. Yeah. White, Cockney, East End, working class, decent. Why have we got, can't you be a proper, appropriate Londoner if you're white? Well, let's speak to social policy analyst, Dr Rakib Essan. Now, good morning, Rakib. Um, good to see you. What do you think has happened here with this image? So just to be clear, it's obviously gone onto the website, but it's clearly a work in progress, and somebody's put notes on it to say this isn't a real, it doesn't represent London. Is that OK, that that's some marketing notes come back? It's not OK at all, Bev. It's, it's plain racism. It's right. as simple as that. Right. I think what, what, you, what you're what you seeing here... Uh, by the way, I'd make the point that London is still a majority white city. The last census showed that 53.8% of London um, is white. Uh, this was actually a really nice image, a, a very family-oriented image. And then for it to be accompanied with this, uh, uh, this phrase doesn't represent real Londoners, what you're seeing there is that the white Londoners are being deprived of their local yeah. pride in their own city and their status as a member of London on the grounds of them being white. If that's not racist, I don't know what is. And we're talking about families who, who may well have their family history in London for generations, if not centuries. Imagine if that we turn the tables here, Rakib, and it was for it was a, 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 a black black parents with their black children, mm. and the image had been scrawled. This is not an image, a proper image of London. The row. But Sadiq Khan would have been facing calls to resign. But because it's white, no, that's OK. Well, I, 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 what I've talked about, and this is what I talked about in my book that was recently published, Beyond Grievance, there's almost been a normalisation of anti-white bigotry on, on, on elements of the left, Andrew. And I think that there's, there's so-called anti-racists who simply don't talk about it enough and they don't do enough to challenge it. And I, and I think that what you're seeing here, people say, oh, it was, it was a mistake by a junior staffer. The fact that this kind of thinking might exist in exactly. City Hall, that should, worry, that should worry us all, to be honest, Andrew. Isn't the, isn't the worry that whoever wrote this thought he was reflecting the view of his political master, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan? Well, if you felt that your place of work wouldn't accept this line of thinking, then you, you wouldn't do it to begin with, would you? And I, and I, and I think that's the, that's the real worry here. Um, and, and I think that it's incredibly alienating. The Mayor of London, in my view, Andrew, all too often he's been racially divisive. He's used public celebrations, including the New Year's Eve fireworks, mm -hmm. to promote the Black Lives Matter movement. Mm -hmm. More recently, he's linked his uh, ULES scheme which took a hammering in the Uxbridge and South Royslip by-election, he linked that with far-right activism. I think that the Mayor of London, considering it's such a diverse city, and I think this is the point that I'd make, is that when you see this sort of modern diversity politics, all too often it's actually deeply exclusionary when it comes to the white British mainstream. Yeah. If you, I mean, if we look at the actual statistics about London as a whole, the percentage of people who live in London who are white British is 36 0.8%. White skinned as a whole, 53, nearly 54%. Um, Asian, black, British, mixed other, 47%. So does he have a point when he says, because all the time, listen, this is the thing about Hello. Sadiq Khan, all the time he's promoting himself yeah. and he's trying to get votes. That's what drives him all the time, more than almost any other politician. I mean, you might say, well, stop the press, Bev. That's what politicians do. But there's something about him particularly that he puts himself at the centre of every little piece of marketing yeah. paid for by the taxpayer. And it does tell us quite a lot about what he is aiming to do and who he's appealing to, doesn't it? 
No, absolutely. I'd make the point that just because London has experienced significant demographic change in recent years, it doesn't mean that white people living in London are all of a sudden not real Londoners. Mm. Uh, they, they are, quite often they belong to families that have been in London for generations. And, and yes, the 37% of London is white British. That's still over one in three people in London. I think that we need to get away from the toxic racial identity politics, which suggests that yeah. if you belong to a particular racial group, you're, you're, you're all of a sudden your authenticity as a Londoner should be questioned. And I don't think that's right at all. You, and it, Raki, if you talk to a cabinet minister these days or Tory MPs, they'll all tell you the same thing, London is lost, um, because they mm -hmm. say it is no longer a white city. They're, they're, they're talking privately when they say this. It has become, it's, we know it's multiracial, but it's an ethnic um, melting pot. And they would point, mm -hmm. they would say this is cynical, Sadiq Khan, because he's appealing for votes from black and ethnic voters who he assumes will vote for him rather than for a white Tory candidate, who, which is what mm. the Tories have chosen for the mayoral campaign next year. Well, I think what I'd say back is that the Conservatives haven't taken London seriously for some time, Andrew. And I think that in the last um, mayoral election, I think that if they'd actually backed their candidate and believed in him, which is Sean Bailey, I think that they could have run Sadiq Khan a lot I closer, agree. if truth be told. And I, I think agree. that this view that just because the city has experienced significant demographic change, that the proportion of people in a particular city or town um, that has become more Asian or black, I think you'll find some of the most authentically conservative values and attitudes are in those ethnic minority mm. communities. So I think that the Conservatives should take London more seriously. Mm. If you look at their most recent, the, the most impressive local election results in recent times, they're coming in places like Harrow. If you're familiar yeah. with Harrow, the majority of people there aren't white either. So I think that the Conservatives need to look at London differently in terms of actually being more optimistic about their electoral chances there. But I think one thing that we should see from the Conservative Party, especially leading figures, is that they should fiercely condemn what's been what's happened here because i think this is a thoroughly disgraceful incident which in my view is racist okay thank well you very said. much and dr well, Raki. and well Hassan. said and well said to him because i agree with him it is racist and you can't imagine what the fuss would be if that was a black family and someone said oh they're not representative yeah but it's all about the e it's all about the esg it's all about yeah, yeah. diversity it's all about they've, they'll have the, the you know they have to tick the box